Hi Sepsis and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're looking at doing a high temperature hot process soap. Now this doesn't require any external heat source, it just uses the exothermic reaction of the saponification itself to cook the soap in the bowl you're making it in. Um, it does mean that the soap volcanoes and you have to watch it like a hawk, but it's, uh, it's not a bad little system if you're looking to get a hot process soap without any equipment. And it does mean that your fragrances last a lot longer because they're added at a cooler temperature. Let's see how I got on with this one, shall we? So let's start with the oils that we're going to use in this one. So first thing going in here is some responsibly sourced palm oil. Um, again, if you don't want to use palm oil, you can replace this. Now we have some cocoa butter going in. Love this in soap. Gives a really luxurious feel. Butters in soaps are wonderful. Um, and talking of butters, here we have some shea butter. Again, we're only putting a, a little bit of this in because uh, it is quite an expensive butter, but I think it brings a, a lovely feel to a soap. Next, coconut oil. Standard in most soaping recipes. Uh, now this can be used for either a cold process or a hot process method. Um, I just happen to be using it for a hot process. In here we have castor oil. I tend to use little pump bottles for it because I can get a more accurate pour. Uh, now we have some olive oil. Again, one of the two oils that you constantly put in, but I have reduced the amount of olive oil I'm using at the moment because of the cost and going in with some other liquid oils like grapeseed, which is a really cost effective oil and also gives you some really good moisturizing properties, particularly if you're super fatting with it. And finally, here we have some rapeseed oil. Uh, so we've got grape seed and rape seed. Rape seed in America is also known as canola. So I've heated this oil up and this oil is at around about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, um, I'll pop on screen just in a second what that would be in Celsius. And uh, the idea behind this is that your oils are going to be super hot and your lye solution is going to be super hot and you're going to combine the two of them and essentially allow that exothermic reaction between the heat of the oils and lye increase and cook the soap like you would during a hot process um, soap recipe. But this time uh, you don't have an external heat source. So it's not on a, uh, it's not on a burner. It's not on a um, hot plate. You're not using a crock pod or a slow cooker. So you'll see here, I'm going to pour the line in a second. Let's just make sure that the stick um, blender is connected. I'm going to pour it down the shaft of the stick blender as per usual. And again, you have to be really, really careful with this. And you can see I've laid a towel down just in case this volcanoing does get out of hand and go over. At least I've got some protection uh, to mop up that, um, that oil. So I'm going to give it a good stick blend now. And I'm going to give it a nice little stir here. And realistically, you need to watch this like a hawk. This could volcano out of the bowl, and we don't want that. So I've got a considerably bigger bowl than I would normally use. It's taken into account that this is going to grow and it's going to volcano out. Um, and I'm just really going with my stick blender here to try and get some decent um, trace going. Now, this technique is also known as a 10 minute stick blender hot process soap um, to a number of people. And apparently you can basically blend this soap for 10 minutes straight and it will cook itself out. Not sure how I feel about that. Not sure whether that would work for me and I don't want to ruin my stick blender. So rather than doing that, I'm going with a technique which is a slightly longer. And this took about half an hour rather than the kind of like hour and a half, maybe two hours that a normal hot process would take. Once you've gotten to a point where you've got a trace, you can see here that I'm covering it with some uh, cling film, some plastic wrap. The idea behind this is you want to keep the temperature into the bowl, into the soap. Now, I believe that I had not enough oils um, to be able to realistically give this a good go. Um, I don't think I got the volcanoing that you'll see in a lot of other videos where there's a lot more oils used because um, this is not a technique that I use regularly and I don't do hot process as a matter of course. I prefer the cold process method. I didn't want to make a massive batch of this, and I think this method would be better supported by using uh, a lot more oils, a lot more lye in a bigger container uh, and doing it that way. So uh, as you go on, you'll see what I did do with it is I made sure that I tested the soap once it got to a point where I thought it was saponified. 
um, with a, a test strip to make sure that there was no lye left and it came in at a, a brilliant um, pH. So as you can see here, I'm going to pop this um, cling film back on. But looking at this now, um, I, I was maybe a little bit panicked when I was doing this. It's the first time I've ever done it. So you'll see my first ever go of it. I can see some oil sitting in this um, batter. And I think realistically, I should have been trying to make sure that was fully incorporated. So we get to the point now where I get my one and only volcano in this whole situation. And what you'll see, I'll get this unwrapped in a second, but can you see how that's kind of like starting to grow? We're starting to get a lot more heat out of it. It's starting to volcano. This is why you must watch this technique like a hawk, because this can start to grow very quickly. And if you watch here now, you can see it start to really accelerate and puff out. And this is what's known as a volcano. And this is where you have to watch it. What you go do is you go in and you just start giving it a stir and stir it in and get that really, really well stirred. Now, as I say, this technique took me around about an hour. Now, look at that. That soap has kind of gone to a really kind of it's almost like it's split. Um, I believe they call this an apple sauce stage, maybe. If I'm wrong, please leave a comment down below um, and let me know because I'm not a hot process person uh, per se. So I'm, I'm always willing to learn on these things. And I think that's important as soaps, soapers. We always have to learn on stuff. So as you can see here, I'm getting that uh, <clears throat> all off of my spatula, giving it a temperature reading, and we're at 189 degrees Fahrenheit. I've put a timer on the screen here, just as I'm doing some other bits and pieces around it, just to, so you can see real time how long I'm leaving this for. So there's a couple of minutes there um, and I'm spinning a lot of this, this up. And you can see we've got some oil left on the top there. And I'm thinking mm, this doesn't look like it's supposed to. So I'm a little bit wary of what's going on. And I don't think I gave this enough time to reach temperatures. I think I went in too early. I think I stirred it too early. But what I did try and do is make sure that my implement that I'm stirring with is solid. What I find with the spatulas is they're great for cold process and you can really get in and get some nice scraping done. With this one, I was worried that the spatulas would be flicking um, the batter out of the bowl as I was stirring it. And I didn't want to really kind of flick exceptionally hot soap batter around the studio. So rather than using these spatulas, which can flick, I decided to use this nice wooden one. Um, and then I do go in with the spatula a little bit later on. But again, the whole point of this process is you're keeping as much heat in as you can. So you must cover it. Now, I could have probably done this in a smaller bowl. I probably should have done it in a darker colored bowl, uh, something that had a little bit more uh, insulation to it. I guess I could have wrapped it. I could have popped it on a little heating pad. But again, this whole process was about not using an external heat source. So I was trying to make sure that this um, was done just in the bowl. Um, with my kind of normal amount of oils. So you can see here, we're getting a change in the visual of the batter. It went from being kind of oil sitting on the surface to starting to get into this like uh, second stage. I, I, again, I think they call it mashed potato. Or maybe I've got my mashed potato and my apple sauce mixed up. Um, the temperature is going down. So it's 157 now. So it's slowly coming down. Um, and I think, right, let's just kind of see what's going on with it. I go back in and give it another stir. I go back in and give it another stir. Um, and I think I should have just left it until it volcanoed or it just cooked itself out. Uh, so here I am again. We're 5766 is going up again. I've got the, the cover on it. Maybe that's working. I'm touching the sides. I'm thinking, oh, is this working? Is it not? It looks a lot, a lot of oil on the top there. To go back in, give it another stir. And as you can see, when I'm stirring it here, we're getting a change in the color. It's going from that kind of real glossy, almost oily separation bit to starting to homogenize, starting to come together. We've got less of that oil sitting on the top and we're getting that nice kind of, as I say, we're getting more mashed potato -y there. So that's looking a little bit better for me, a little bit safer. Again, let's get our in inverted commas, lid, our, our cling film wrap over it. And you can see this is still generating quite a lot of heat because it's creating the condensation on the plastic wrap quite quickly. And you can see that fog up relatively quickly. So again, we're going to just move this on and we're going to stir it again. Again, it goes white. We put the lid back on it. 
And really, we're just sitting here and watching this soap. It is not the most interesting of uh, soaps to uh, watch. And I found that I wasn't quite sure when it was ready because it got to this stage where it was like whipped. And I was like, mm, do I need to do what? So at this point, you can now add your super fat and you can add your coloring and you can add your fragrance. So with this particular recipe, I super fatted with apricot kernel oil, um, which I think is a really lovely skin loving oil. And the great thing about um, a hot process is you can uh, add your oils at a later stage and they don't get saponified as badly. Uh, now, I did use my apricot kernel oil to disperse my mica into. Um, and this is clementine pop along with a little bit of uh, buttercup yellow um, from Resonate. Um, but at this point, everything was starting to set up and get really hard. And I was like, oh, I think I may have left it too late. So let's get the fragrance oil in there. And again, adding all of these um, additional additives are cooling it down. And you can just see there how it's starting to kind of just clump together. And it was like, oh, I need to get this into a mold as quickly as possible. So I dumped it into a mold um, and then anything that was left on the spatula, I then decided to just test and see whether the pH of it was acceptable as a soap, uh, which it was. So this is a fully usable bar of soap. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. Um, I thankfully used an orange rather than a pink. Otherwise, we would have been looking at a nice meaty ham soap. Um, and it's close, but it's not quite there. Let's just get it in the mold, get it patted down. And let's get on to leaving this to set up and getting it cut. And here we are on the cut. Look at that rustic top. Um, hot process is not a process I favour, but it can be useful, particularly if you're doing kind of a rebatch. But here's our soap. Um, it's kind of peachy. It has got a peach fragrance in it, um, which accelerates trace enormously. So that's maybe one of the problems I had. Um, but also uh, it's uh, it's just one of those processes that I. I don't like the look of a hot process soap as much as I like the look of a cold process. Now, there are makers out there that make some fantastic hot process soaps that look amazing. How they do it, I don't know. It seems like witchcraft to me. But again, it's it's not a better or worse technique. It's a different technique and everyone has their favourites and there isn't one technique that's better. Melt and pour soap making is not better than cold process and cold process is not better than hot process. It all needs to be kind of come together. And here's our final soap. It's not the prettiest. It's not the greatest in the world but it's a hot process soap made without additional heat. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and allows me to make more videos and tutorials for all of you. When you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon if you'd like to get notified when a new video is uploaded. And thanks a lot, Soapsters. I'll see you again next time.